I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. For a free month's trial of Treehouse, join Nick and I over at teamtreehouse.com slash show. In this episode of The Treehouse Show, we'll be talking about practical typography, date pickers, form builders, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this wonderful practical typography guide. It's really, really extensive, and you can purchase it if you find it useful. So how to pay for this book. Of course, it is available for free right here on the web. But and they are not sponsoring the show. We should make that known. It, they are not, but it is really, really cool, incredibly in-depth here. I'm just going to click on apostrophes here because I learned something in here I did not know. So first off, you usually are using a single straight quote if you're just copying and pasting from a plain text source or just typing in into, say, a text editor, when in fact, oftentimes, you probably mean to use an apostrophe, which is a different character. So they have a couple examples here of what is wrong and what is right and how to use apostrophes properly because sometimes you want them to face one way or another. T-I-L. Something I did not know is that if you're using Hawaiian spellings of Hawaiian words, you actually are not using apostrophes. They're, I believe they're called okinas. I'm not quite sure how to say that word, but it's actually a different character and you want them to be pointing upwards. Anyway, that's just one example of the kind of depth that this particular ebook, I guess I should say, goes into. And it's just really pretty amazing. A lot of stuff in here I did not know myself. That's really cool and very practical. Mm -hmm. It was way better than the impractical typography book. I know, that one yeah. is useless. If, if one needed a sequel. Next up, we have a project called Shoelace, which is a visual bootstrap builder. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and check it out. So you'll notice on the left side of the screen here, we have different devices, phone, tablet, desktop, and large desktop. And then over on the right here, we have some HTML. And in the middle is a box and a grid. Now, if I click inside of this box and then start dragging my mouse, I can name this row, we'll name it Nick. And now I have columns, and as I resize this column, it gives me the different bootstrap class that is associated with that column. And then over on the left side of the screen, it displays what this would look like. Now I can go ahead and add another column. So we'll do four and three and one, and now I have a three column layout. And now I have a three column layout. And I can of course adjust these different columns and then go ahead and create more rows and repeat that process. Now as I do that, it gives me the generated HTML over on this side, div with a class of row and a div with a class of row and JSON. And it gives me the HTML or if I'm using Jade templates, that works as well. And if I want to, it will even give me the less mix-in to generate this code. Now you can copy all this and paste it inside of your editor of choice, and boom, you are good to go. Wow, shoelace. They are really tying up the loose ends here. Really, uh, you know. Oh, was that tongue-in-cheek? It, it, it makes sense that this would be for bootstrap. I don't know, I think I lost a little bit of my soul when I heard those jokes. Next up is a really cool blog post called Creating Distraction-Free Reading Experiences. Definitely not a distraction-free show today, yeesh. Uh, basically, it's an article about how to create blog posts that look exactly like this one. No, I'm just kidding, but this is a good example of a distraction-free reading experience and some of the best practices that they describe. So, for example, you don't want to have, you know, embedded Flappy Bird right on your blog post because, oh, we should you go know, play Flappy Bird yeah, instead of finishing reading this article. I just want to uh, sign up for Bank of America right now. Look at that, huh? 
Wow, okay. Um, but basically, it's just an article, or it's basically describing how Flappy Bird is all about focus. And you want to make sure that you're focusing on the bird and not necessarily your score up at the top. I always focus on the score. Maybe that's my problem. They also bring up the practical typography guide we just talked about. So that's definitely a useful resource in creating a distraction-free reading experience. But one thing uh, <laughs> that's actual substance here is uh, something I really liked. And it says, try not to use uh, skeuomorphic metaphors such as a book. So like iBooks on the iPad has this page flipping mechanism that tries to make it feel and look like a real book. But in reality, that's kind of just a distraction that breaks up the pages arbitrarily into, well, pages. And since iBooks has been released, Apple has actually come out with a reading mode where you can just scroll through the content and that's actually a lot more conducive to reading and I think in summary the article uh, well sums it up really nicely and says if you want people to experience your content like a physical book well go print a book. Anyway it's a really cool article uh, they also go into fixed position elements and sidebars and it just describes how to kind of break down a website, get rid of all the elements that are going to distract somebody from actually just reading the content and enjoying the website. All I got out of that was that I need to increase my Flappy Bird score. Hey, I mean, let's go swimming. Yeah, when in Rome. <laughs> Speaking of, Rome is our next project. This is a dependency-free opt-in UI for a date and time picker. Dependency-free means you do not need jQuery or anything like that. Go ahead, let's click in this box and pick a date and time. Wow, look at that. It's what nice just pop. happened? This, <laughs> the future just happened right now, right here. Literally, we're going into the future. It is not July 1st yet. Actually, it probably is by the time people are watching this. Yeah, look at this. Here, here we go. The future is now. You wow. can tell it when to uh, start the weeks. Oh, look, I don't want my weeks to start on Sunday. I want my weeks to start on Monday and end on Wednesday. What about on fun day? Do they have an option to add extra days? Uh, no, that's actually integrated with Sunday. Mm. Usually in the form of a hashtag. I see. Uh, so next we have pick a date. You can also pick a time if you want to. I like this little, little time drop down right there. Boom, done. You can remove and restore Rome at will. Rome, of course, being the name of this plugin and not the place on the planet. Uh, anyway, ton of different options, and like I said, this is completely dependency-free. It's actually a pretty small plugin, too, so if you need to implement a date and time picker on your website, go ahead and check out Rome. Very nice. Well, next up is Pure CSS One Div Weather Animated Icons. I know that because it says it right here on the website. Here are a bunch of animated weather icons, so if you're building a weather app, bam, this is you're perfect done. for you. Yep, it's all done. Here is your seven-day forecast look like, looks like there's going to be nighttime right there on the fifth day. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be preceded by a rainbow. So that's, that's all really good information to know. Cannot wait till Thursday, rainbow day. This is on CodePen, so you can click Edit Pen in the lower right corner and see how this all works. Now, whether or not this is totally practical to you, see what I did there, whether or not, it uh, is still pretty useful to learn from. So here are those single divs. So that's exactly uh, all the markup that is present. So there's just one div for each one of those. Whoa, how are they doing that? Yeah, well, my forecast, impressed. I... <laughs> so there's just one div for each one of these. And how are they doing that? Well, for... Each one, I was guessing that they were using uh, box shadows, and it looks like that that is indeed what they're doing for some of these. So here is the sunny one, and they are using a box shadow right there, but actually it's mostly just gradients, and then they animate each one of those elements. So they just rotate and do it 360 degrees. There's keyframes right there. However, for cloudy, here we go, you have a bunch of box shadows here, 
and that's what makes those uh, those raindrops appear. So that's pretty cool. And uh, oh, actually, I meant for rainy. There we go. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, it's basically all done with a little bit of fancy CSS and some animations, and it's definitely really useful for learning purposes. So if you want to see how this works, it's all, all on CodePen, so you can go ahead and just kind of break away each individual part and uh, see what happens when you remove it or add stuff. That's amazing. Cool. Yeah, well, I like it. That is all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, make sure to check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also search for us in iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show for a free month. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.